Oh. We are live. All right. Well, let's get into it. Hello, welcome to another Dark Mushroom Media cast. This time around, we're doing a uh, Star Citizen focused cast. Uh, I've been wanting to do like a series of these, maybe like once a month for a while now, and uh, we're starting that. These are going to be a little bit shorter than usual, our normal cast, but uh, yeah, we hope you enjoy. But for this particular one, the first one we're doing, um, basically we're just covering what's in the game right now, like how, like. How to get in the game right now, what to expect right now. I'm not talking about the future of the game, I'm not talking about, like, you know, stuff the devs promised, or stuff the community wants, or anything like that. We're gonna delve into that shit later down the road. Right now, we are just doing a, like, kind of an introductory cast to Star Citizen. Now, I, myself, very fucking familiar with Star Citizen. I've already dumped... Very annoyingly I, familiar yes, with I've, Star Citizen. Yes, I've actually probably dumped over 100 hours. I don't have... It doesn't have a clock like uh, Steam or Origin or whatever. But yeah, I've dumped a lot of time, and recently, Jose, I finally co-horsed Jose to get into it, and uh, he delved around in it for an hour or so, so you're going to get, you know, two different points of views, and Jose will obviously probably be asking questions and stuff as I blabber about. Um, but yeah, let's just, first things first, uh, Star Citizen is something you are going to need a decent computer for. It's running off the CryEngine 3, uh, the space maps are fucking big. They're going to get really fucking big. So that's just something right off the bat. If you have a lower-end rig or maybe your computer's starting to show its age with some stuff coming out, you're probably going to have to upgrade. Uh, this might be one of those games that you kind of build a computer around. Because even not as optimized, some of those dogfight uh, scenarios we did were crazy and i just built my computer like a like a year ago it's like i guess now because of the 980s came out it's kind of like mid-tier yeah like standalone but it's it, you can run pretty much anything on ultra settings without worrying about it but star citizen is just so fucking massive yeah but you have to keep yeah. in mind this is all pre-alpha obviously the, and the time i've been with right, the game right. i've seen it get optimized better so it's it's mm -hmm. nowhere near its final state of how it will run or anything like that but, but, but you did mention a while back that it you the one thing you would have to upgrade definitely is your memory. I guess something yeah. was announced when when you started. No, it was it. like you started delving in the subreddit. It wasn't like announced. It was more. It's just p players in the community have come to a general conclusion. You're going to want 16 gigs of RAM for this game. That's just, just as simple as I can put it. You're going to want 16 gigs. I myself only have eight. Uh, so yeah, and RAM's something where you can upgrade without worrying about the power supply in the order, like upgrading your power supply rather. So yeah, uh, but yeah, you need a decent rig. You need a at least quad core, a good quad core. Really, you need like an i7. You're gonna need at least two gigs of video RAM. Just it's it's very high end. Think like years ago, what people thought of Crisis around, even years after it came out. Just that was like the holy fucking grail of yeah, system that used requirements. used to be the benchmark, right? Yeah, like this the, uh, I think. Game run? Yeah, I think Star Citizen. Is a, uh, it's going to be that new, or when it comes out eventually, that'll be that thing of that time, as far as system requirements go. Too long, didn't read. You need a fucking beefy rig, so just right off the bat, you got to keep that in mind. And you also have to keep in mind this is going to be in development for at least another year. Most people in the community think at least another two. So hmm. you've got. It's not like you know, go buy a rig if you want to play this. You don't have to do that right now. You can. Like me and Jose both did, you can slowly piecemeal it out over a long period of time and then build mm -hmm. it when you get it all and you get that wonderful feeling and it's delicious. But yeah, That's true. thing number one, you need a beefy rig. So let's move on. Um, the way you buy into the game now is you pledge for ships. Wide range of ships, they range from single-seater to fucking Gal Battlestar Galactica cruisers. It's awesome. Really expensive, mm -hmm. though. But, um... Just to get in the base, the base game right now, they're talking about splitting it up, but right this second, on October, end of October, it's going to run you $45, I think is the cheapest. What's the Aurora LN, the Mustang? But keep in mind, it's going to be two games. Oh, fuck, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Right now, the cheapest you can get in is 45 and that ranges to 1000 or I'm sorry, 5000 for like all these ships. It's it's not really that you're buying the ships because all these ships can be earned in game. It's more they call it pl it's it's pledging. That's what it's toted as. You're pledging for these ships. You 
like maybe the high well it's absolutely true the higher the more you pledge like if you buy a $200 package you're going to get a lot more bells and whistles than someone that bought say a $45 package and that's not including your ship that's like account stuff could be uh, in game currency could be insurance could be like posters in your hangar it could it's a lot of different things but mm. the pricing kind of ranges wildly when you look at it as a whole but if you want to be uh, sensible about it, I guess is the right word. You want to keep it like I don't know, under a hundred dollars. Probably the forty-five to sixty-five dollar range is somewhere you'd be looking at. And keeping in mind that's for two games, not just one. Uh, so right. as far as AAA titles go, it's two for one. You know, you look at it that way. That's cool. There's still one one thing that I'm not really clear on. Uh, you mentioned a few times in passing that your ships have lifetime insurance. Like, could you? touch on that at all? Yes. Uh, lifetime insurance is basically... The way the, the these ships have come out and like been sold in the past is uh, they have a concept. They have, you know, what they want to do with the ship. They haven't actually put it together yet. They haven't really fundamentally got the uh, nails and bolts on it. But they're like, here's the ship we want to do. It's concept sale. If you give us money for however much the ship costs, if you buy the ship now, you will get lifetime insurance, meaning... Whatever the fuck happens in the universe, you will have your ship. You cannot lose your ship that you paid money for. That sentence right there is the reason lifetime insurance is a big deal to a lot of people. It's a small thing because they've gone in great detail that insurance will not be that big of a deal. It'll be something you can uh, set to renew months in advance. It won't cost that much. There's going to be other stuff like docking fees and you know buying fuel and cargo and whatnot, and that's going to... Uh, the devs have stated that's going to play a bigger part than insurance. Insurance is supposed to be just this tiny little thing, like a forethought in the back of your head you don't <laughs> ever really think about. But just knowing that I spent money on a ship and I'm not going to fucking lose it, that's that's why I like False it. peace of mind. Peace of mind, exactly. Thank you, Jose. Now keep in mind, some people will buy you know $300 ships just because it has life insurance. That's a little out there for me. I'm not that crazy. I bought a, a base retaliator, which was one hundred and fifty dollars. And yeah, that's is that the one that that like four of us can. Six of us, the, actually. Six. Oh, yes. Nice. Um, it's a lot for a virtual ship in a game that's nowhere near being completed. I acknowledge that. But I've got a few different groups of friends that are kind of getting interested in Star Citizen, so I like the idea of having a six-person ship where one day I can take. Jose, Palmer, and Corbin out, and then the next day I can take a few other different people out, and just that I can have this basically flying fortress. It's awesome. But, yeah, lifetime insurance is really not that big of a deal. It just, it's, not, it's nothing you should care about at this point in time. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep doing these concept sales, and these ships are going to be have lifetime insurance, and you can upgrade a ship to a different ship and keep the lifetime insurance. Like, you can upgrade to a ship that's been out for a year and give that ship life insurance. That's, all, that's why a lot of people want it so badly because you can just move it around like that mm. but it's apparently not that big of a deal I'm just a little fucking insane so I wanted it and I has it and I'm happy with it but I'm going to have a Mustang as my uh, second ship that's not going to have lifetime insurance and I'm not sweating losing that Mustang anytime soon just you know set that mm. the insurance up months in advance I think at one point they even said years in advance and it's going to be just so small a fee, according to the developers, that it's just not going to be an issue. So, gotcha. Lifetime insurance is kind of who gives a fuck, but if you're really insane about it, it's every... I don't want to say month, but every six to eight weeks, you'll generally find a concept sale where you can get lifetime insurance. And those are only available during as concept you've sale. seen. Yeah, and the, the, the sale will pop up, sometimes with no... Uh, warning whatsoever and it'll only be like a week to ten days I think is the general timetable mm -hmm. so you'd have that that amount of time to get in and get it and then the ship where? wouldn't come back on sale until it's in the hangar and they're ready to walk around it and stuff where the lifetime where do you get would that go. information mainly from like their Twitter or from like the subreddit uh, I, the subreddit and the RSI forms like the official forms oh, I used okay. to frequent those quite, I still I'm still on the subreddit on almost a daily basis but I used to frequent the forms quite a lot and Basically, the subreddit just kind of—it's a filter for from the forms for the information. So hmm. I find that easiest to use personally. The gotcha. uh, subreddit's just—is uh, it Star Citizen or uh, it is Star Citizen? So and the RSI forms wealth of information there, um, obviously. Which I think, as 
as we'll get into it later, now that I feel like I have a countdown on like when to start, you know, investing in this game essentially, like I'll probably have to start doing some more research and reading up and joining those forums. Yeah. It's uh it's definitely a game, game is, it's it's a game you wanna read about and like, kinda of get a feel for before you dive into yeah. it, I feel. Yeah, but for whatever reason it doesn't feel as intimidating as Eve Eve Online. I get that impression, but I mean, I don't think a lot has been released on the game. So. The big, uh, the big difference for me, I never played Eve Online, but I, I love the idea of it. If you you know got rid of all the spreadsheets, uh, the, the big difference for me between between Eve Online and Star Citizen is Star Citizen is going to have they haven't exactly said the number. It was originally twenty in Art Corp, then it was forty, and I th I think fifty is the next mark. But say a hundred players. Instead of EVE Online, we're all on one big fucking laggy server. You're in 100-player instances. Or, just to be safe, 50-player instances. And in these uh, areas, there's going to be, like, nine NPCs for every he regular human player. Hmm. They stated that somewhat recently. So there's going to be... A, it's, it's going to be very busy in these stations, and the space battles will be very big. Even though, you know, you think 50 players, well, I mean, you know, that's not a lot. You gotta keep in mind, there's there could be, you know... Two dozen ships, a few multi-crew ships, a bunch of snub fighters running around. And that's just the human players. That's not encompassing the AI, however that would incorporate into it via Vandal or like some type of support human ship or whatever. So that's the big difference for me, is just the player in like these giant you know, in Eve Online, you, every now and then you see one of those videos where it's like three thousand player battle, millions lost, yada yada yada. Like mm -hmm. uh I don't think Star Citizen will have that type of it's going to have that type of feel, but it's not going to be to that scale. Like, I'm certain but, if someone lost... But it, it will have that sort of player-driven economy, though. Yes, yes. The devs have been very mm -hmm. animate That's, on that. Yeah. About players playing a huge part in their economy and then kind of being apart from it. Hmm. Which I think is a good thing, personally. This game kind yeah. of... Uh, brings in more, like, grizzled vet gamers than kind of young bloods. It's and I think anyone who's a fan of um, Wing Commander... Yeah. I mean, Chris Roberts is spearheading this whole thing, and he was Wing Commander, obviously. So. Shepard Commander. Shepard Commander, best commander. Um, but yeah, as far as ships go, you can check the game packages on the RSI website. Like I said, I would recommend somewhere in between like $45, $65, something like an Avenger or a 300 series, something where you don't have the base... You know, the crappiest ship, if you will, and you can do a little bit better. But honestly, like, the two starter ships, the Aurora and the Mustang, I kind of like both of them. The Aurora is basically like a space van. It's just like a cargo compartment, a little bed, and then a, a thing to hold the giant cargo, cargo box on the end. It's slow as hell, but the LN has, like, five weapon hard points. It's got missiles and then four laser guns, so it can pack a punch. It's just really slow, and the Mustang is very fragile, except for the Delta. It's a little bit more beefier. Mm -hmm. But it lo I, I just see how love those are. I can see how those are like great starter ships, and that's the ones that like the lowest cost ones. Yeah. But um, after playing in that um, Gladius three week or whatever, yeah, I, I think, think the Gladius is maybe it's because of my play style, but I think that's going to be the ship I use. Yeah, the Gladius is kind of Gladius. Just for reference, is a ninety dollar ship or a hundred dollar package. The Gladius is basically the Mustang. Obviously, it doesn't look the same, but it's kind of the same ship. It's just better at what it does. It's more maneuverable. It's got more hard points. It's stronger. It's faster. It's just like a beefed up, you know, uh, dogfighter, and it does look mm -hmm. cool. But I really like the look of the Mustang, personally. Like to the point where I'm going to get a Mustang over any other ship, just because a I don't want to dump too much more money into the game, and b I think the Delta uh -huh. is a really good ship. Mm -hmm. It's got a jump drive. We'll get into that later. It's got a lot of hard points. It's just... I like the look of it. And it's got, like, more armor. And it's stealth armor. That's what I'm trying to think of. Stealth is big with me. I have a Retaliator and a Mustang. And I'm going to get a Mustang Delta. Because I like the idea of, like, staying off people's radar and shit like that. You're just saying words to me. I know. Um, but yeah, let's move on from the ships. Just don't go crazy with spending would be my thing. And you have to keep in mind there's a rec system, which is the currency you can earn in Arena Commander by playing Arena Commander. And with this currency, you can run out ships, you can run out weapons. Yeah, that's shields. what I was really interested in. Because uh, the one ship that got me really interested was that Space Yacht. 
But after the uh, price, 890 like jump, which was priced I, when it was on sale, I think it's 650, and it yeah. goes for like 900 on the black market, the gray market or whatever they call. It. Yeah, that's because that's because you're a crazy person. You don't need a space shop with a space jacuzzi. Yeah. So. I mean, well, thing that that price, you know, kind of guided me away from that. If anything, I thought that but, uh, would drive you towards it faster and harder, because it's kind of guy what you are. Really drove me faster was uh, the fact that it was very limited edition. Uh, yes. That back alone, maybe. <sighs> almost considerate, but I don't remember if there was a specific non. But you have to keep in mind in the full game, you'll be able to. We can steal one of those, kill everyone, take the ship, and then you can live out your sick, twisted fantasy when, cruise that dream. that fails and your and your ship explodes, I have lifetime insurance, insurance and I don't Perfect. give a fuck. Perfect. Exactly. Um, but yeah, wreck, wreck is a system used to test out weapons and ships, that way you can, you know, try before you buy, and it's just kind of fun to, right now there isn't a whole lot to do with wreck, so it's kind of fun to just rent out the different ships and get a feel for flying different ships, I just think it makes you a better pilot. There were alpha modules, which were like the, for the dogfighting mode, for the first person mode, and for the planet side mode, or like the player interaction mode. Those are all off the table, they're not doing that anymore, which is... Really cool and really smart on their part. It's smart because the whole module system just confused a lot of newcomers. And you had to have the module to actually play these things. I probably should have stated that before I rambled on about how simple it is. But uh, they, it, made, they, it was 5 bucks for each pass, and they were initially going to sell three of them. And $15, that's like in the grand scheme of things, if you're putting a lot of money in this game, it's who gives a fuck. But just the amount of players they have and the amount of revenue that would have generated for them is astonishing that they decided to actually be good guy developers and not just say, fuck it, we're just going to have an open alpha that you can buy into. Just so wanted they, to point they that out. they bundled all that into... Yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't even okay. exist anymore, although my rec pass was uh, basically recycled for in-game currency. Like $5 worth of in-game currency to even it out. So they just don't even exist anymore, which is good. Are you talking about that, like, that Citadel that we tried during that free... Citadel. You mean the player interaction stuff? Yeah. Is yeah, that that, that was originally the planet side module, and now it's just Arc Corp because that's where it is. Oh, so that's not the the two modules. You're it's about. one of the three. There's that the Arc Corp module. There was the dog fighting mode, and then there was the first person shooter. And they're gonna merge the first person shooter into multi crew at some point. Oh. And release okay. it. Hopefully soon. But yeah, alpha module is no longer a thing. Um. Uh, real quick, back to like pricing and, and mm -hmm. cost. Um, have you had to spend any money aside from what you paid for your ships, like so far in the game? There's an initial like, depending on your package, twenty to fifty dollar bump for mm -hmm. the game itself. The cheaper packages, uh, you know, for like the forty five dollar package, it'll only actually like think the LN's priced at thirty. Actually, it goes from ten to fifty. The more you pay, the more it is, but it gives you more bells and whistles for right. it. All right, so I, I guess besides upgrades for ships, is there anything you've had to pay extra for? Um, no. Um, in its you, you can, like, subscribe and get, like, stuff for, your, like, hangar items, like a bar or, like, a fucking alien relic or some shit that a lot of people do that mm -hmm. funds a lot of the... Uh, like web shows they put on for Star Citizen, which is cool, but no, there's, there's, I haven't spent anything like that. I don't really give a fuck. Okay. I do but want that bar that at some point. Yeah, I, at some point I want to get that bar flare, because it's a bar that you pick up and you can drink and you get drunker and drunker and you sway and shit, it's fucking hilarious. <coughs> but aside from being goofy, yeah, it's just it serves no real purpose aside from uh, looking at shiny, th shiny things in your hangar. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the current modes are there's player versus player where you just pop in your ship and you shoot players in other ships. This mode is kind of fucky at the moment. There's a lot of Hornets, which are like the top tier dogfighter ship or one of the top tier dogfighter ships that just outclass everything in every aspect. And a lot of people flying around in those. So I wouldn't recommend delving into PvP right off the bat. Instead, I would recommend getting better at the game and getting a better feel for the controls in PvE, which is Vandal Swarm. Vandal being the alien menace that humanity has come across in the 20-whatever-fuck century it is. 28? 29? Um, basically, you, you and uh, four people get together and shoot a bunch of alien spaceships. 
in waves that get progressively harder and more and more aliens as it goes on and it gets pretty like at the beginning it's very easy you just kind of fly around and fuck with the aliens and blow them up and then by wave 12 13 you are like fighting for dear life for what feels like hours on end it is fantastic there's also just a free flight mode which me and Jose did where you can just fly around uh, in a private party or just on, on an online lobby and blow players up for no real reason and laugh hilariously as mm. four cutlass missiles flying to them at the same time. It was Or just spin out of control not knowing how yes. to steady your ship. While your friend targets you and blows you up for no real reason. <laughs> so yeah, I would definitely recommend... Uh, this is a game, even if you're familiar with space games, you're going to want to fuck around with it and play around with it for an hour or two mm. before you really delve into like, ah, I'm going to yeah. try hard and kill people now. Just a... Definitely recommended. Um, and then there's Arc Corp, which is the planet side module, what I talked about earlier. Basically, it's the ground floor of the MMO aspect of the game, where you can run around, you can interact with other players. They're slowly opening up the map, so you can get a, you can look and see what they're going to do with like where you, a gun shop where you can run in and buy guns and ammo and stuff. There's there's a bar, there's a spaceship, space lot. It's, it's just very basic ground floor stuff right now, but it's the beginnings of the MMO. It's the beginnings of the main game, so it's definitely kind of cool. And pretty much all anyone ever does in there is dance, or at least that's what they did until 1.3 dropped recently. Now it's just race buggy simulator. You cannot get away from them. It's disturbing. I went into the gun shop just to see if anything new was in there, and then I popped back out and the door opened, and there was just a buggy on fire with a guy, like, bouncing at inhuman speed on top of it. It was it was disturbing. So yeah, you gotta kinda take that with a grain of salt, but it's kinda cool to finally see the main game starting to come together like that. I know Jose enjoyed it quite a lot, because he's one of those people that enjoys those things. And... Yeah. I, I enjoy customizing my character. I enjoy little kind of role-playing parts of games. So uh, I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. And you, and you saw it uh, after the swarm of buggies where it just feels nonsensical now or before yeah i think in uh, the before time it did in the, in the long long uh it was I, I the last sunday where there was that free weekend i didn't get a chance to like hop on but i did see a lot of funny videos of this is all the bullshittery that happened on the uh on the citadel Oh yeah, it's 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 hilarious. Some of the things you will watch transpire, just standing around in the background and like planning yourself, just like walk away and do something else, and occasionally glance up at your monitor. Just walk away. Um, yeah, I'm taking too long on certain things. I'm trying to get through this, but yeah, that's basically what's in the game now. You got PvP, PVE, and and, that's, uh, and fuck around with friends. One point three is the thing that just released, released, which expanded on Arc Corp. It, it uh, lots of weapon rebalances, little effect changes, lasers like bounce off the uh, ships differently and the shields differently. Sorry, I just spaced out for a second. Oh. Um, a lot of under the hood stuff, and it's basically kind of a preparation leading up to 2.0. It's starting to bring the things together. In the in like the, the alpha of the alpha, people are flying around in retaliators and multi group ships and stuff, and just breaking the game in hilarious ways. But it's it's the first big release leading up to like 2.0, which is the multi crew and the first person shooter and all that stuff. When's that uh, slated to be? Originally slated to be like now. Um, they're being smart and not giving out any more deadlines. The general hope is um, before, like right before Christmas, like they did with a big patch last year, basically before the end of this year, which would be nice. But I don't know if that's going to happen. It really depends in the next few weeks about their dev blog and like where they're at. And if I have to read the phrase blockers one more time, I will lose my shit. But uh, hopefully by the end of the year. If not, probably early 2016. Gotcha. Uh, All right, let's delve into the community, which we've talked about a little bit. It's... Cultish is a bit harsh, but uh, they're good people, generally. They're usually very friendly. They're really welcoming towards new players. They're willing to like take time out of their day to help you out. And, like, 
or help you if, some, if something's someone posts something about a bug that no one else knows about or is common knowledge, people will like go out of their way to be like, hey, try this, or what if you did this in the config file? It's, it's, uh, they're really good folks. It's, it's rare nowadays to see a community so positive and helpful and just excited about this game, which is... Could it be that their forums are just really well moderated? And all the ads <laughs> no, are like... No, that, uh, I, there's much debate about that being the case on the RSI forums, but that's not really the case on the subreddit. I see occasional shit posting, and I'm okay with it, so... Good stuff. Um, but yeah, they're just really excited for this fucking game, which I am too, but I mean, to the point where, like, this year alone, there have been a lot of big development updates that have just been completely fucking missed. Stuff that was supposed to be in the game, like, months ago. Half a year ago, not in the game. Bound to happen with an alpha development. They're, I mean, Star Citizen's really trying something big and different, and just... It's fucking massive in scale, so it's it's understandable. But ju it's, I've just noticed a weird pattern. When whenever these deadlines are missed, there's usually a big sale that comes about. Be it a concept sale. Actually, I think they've all been concept sales. And the community, instead of being angry that they didn't give, get like a big update or you know get anywhere near where they were hoping they would be at this point in time, they're happy to spend hundreds of dollars on a concept ship with LTI. <clears throat> instead of That's actually like getting this Stockholm update. Stockholm Syndrome. It's insane! It's literally insane. What the fuck? It's, it's very, it's just, I, there's no word. It's a, but I mean, they're good folks, so it's kind of, who gives a fuck? Like, I'm going to be posting this on the subreddit, and I'm kind of curious to see how they, it's, it's very hot and cold, like, on the forums on the subreddit. It's either very positive about the game, you know, hopeful outlook, or this game is shit, it's vaporware, it's never going to be made. There's not a whole lot of middle ground that I generally see in all this posting, all these posts, which yeah, is just strange. Be like a troll post. Well, no I, it would have to be like a troll, com like a troll subreddit. Like, it's, it'd be so massive, like, I don't know. Maybe the bigger the lie, the harder to believe, but it's just strange, but I mean, generally, the people who play the game are very friendly and willing to help you out, and very okay with yeah, you know I a new guy pops in new guy pops in the horde mode and like gets one kill and dies four times they're generally like ah good effort guy not like fuck you which you know is every other video game community so it's got that going for them kind of crazy but good folk good folk um let's jump into just real quick your first thoughts because like i said you played this game for about an hour or so you Messed around with shooting other people. You messed around with flying. You messed around with Arc Corp. Just you haven't actually pledged yet either. You you played during a uh, right. free weekend thing. Just that right. Was right during the uh, that con that was going on. Citizen Con, they gave which was the big uh, yeah. big annual thing <laughs> they do. But yeah, just what did you think of it overall? Uh, it was definitely an amazing advertising campaign for the game uh, it definitely got me uh, interested in dropping some hard-earned cash on that game because uh, a, a lot of time you know it was like in you know in my periphery and you know, I've got a bunch of other games that I'm not gonna play I'm not gonna spend something like 40 50 bucks on something that you know it's not actually out yet but seeing that playing during that free weekend uh, I definitely didn't like hop on the the hype train, but like I'm definitely more aware of it, and I think down the line I, I definitely will will buy a ship just just to have one because uh, that's I think that's going to be a game I'm going to play. Uh, so right off the bat, you know, I, it changed my mind completely about the game. It's you know I, I think it's going to definitely live up to everything that not just the devs promise, but that the community kind of hive minded. I think it's going to definitely come close to, you know, all that hype. Uh, so more actual nitty gritty first impressions. The like the combat, mm -hmm. it felt very um, not. It was like too precise, I guess. It, it's definitely something like uh, <coughs> I was expecting, like you know, more wing commander type. You know, not minute kind of shifts in gravity and yaw and all that. Yeah, there are, there are a there are many a button to press while you're flying a spaceship in this game. And so uh, it's 
it definitely took a, a like you said it took a while to like learn how to actually maneuver the ship but when you finally like when something snaps and there's just something clicks and you kind of get it it is the most satisfying feeling ever like racing alongside like uh, right next to like a, a floating asteroid and then just like in Tokyo drifting around it to like you know zero in on who you're gonna shoot like that that was you really spent a, you spent a good five minutes Tokyo drifting around asteroids if I remember right <laughs> while I was yeah, like trying was. to kill you and failing miserably <laughs> it was it was insane I did not imagine that sort of handling yeah it, it feels fucking fantastic like it's it's like uh, the Matrix like you got to get the helicopter pilot instructions downloaded in your head but once it's there you're like all right let's do this and i I can only imagine how it's going to feel for like other ships hopefully they all feel different i mean i've only tried the one intro ship you the gladius suggested i tried Mm. and then the and then the or did you fly in a mustang that's right you did yeah so you flew in a mustang and a gladius yeah you you basically you flew in two like dogfighty ships Mm -hmm. and yeah there's both felt pretty pretty different but not too different and you know, and there's so, going to be cargo ships. There's going to be uh, multi-crew ships. There's going to be just mm-hmm. a wide. There's going to be like EMP ships. There's going to be so mm-hmm. many different ships. So yeah, like there's going to be a lot of variety to how you want to fly. Yeah. And if it's how you as fly. simple as you know renting it out for a couple of sessions, then that's that's going to be awesome because it'll be a completely different experience with every ship. Right. Um. So yeah, right off the bat. If if you just want pure mechanics, something that feels great, something that plays great, and it's only going to get better, uh, I think, uh, that should be enough to get you into it. Um, and then the potential for the other aspects of the game, like going into that hub world, uh, that was pretty cool. You know, they had all these uh, shop fronts. You know, there was like a like a med bay. There was a like a showroom for uh, like a personal craft. Uh, there was. Uh, a bar, all that, and you know, and there's always a bunch of people populating, actual other players populating the area. And just dancing their hearts to their heart's yeah, content. Yeah. And, I mean, if, you know, if, if role-playing is your thing, I think this is, this is pretty good, because it, it looks really good, too. I mean, like, it's... Yeah, it's I mean, really crimes and brief. It's of, like, you know, reality, I think, like, realistic-looking things. It, it's not, like, too fantasy, it's, like, hard sci-fi-ish you know just like like you want a space station to be and uh, everyone's walking around in like a, their combat suit or whatever I never could figure out how to change my uh, my suit though they, there's like a loadout station in 1.3 now before that all you did was hit F6 and you just cycled through the suits but now there's like you have like a loadout station for your gear and stuff in your yeah, hangar so, so that was cool uh we didn't really get to do a lot of the uh, PVE section. Uh, it, it, like, they actually took that off that. the uh, free week. That used to be a thing in free oh, week, but apparently now it's not. Okay. I think they still have PvP, but yeah, we, we basically just hopped into an open internet server and just let whatever unfold for like an mm-hmm. hour. It was fun, so. Yeah, uh, flying with other ships, you know, seeing the obvious new people, trying it out. You know, trying trying to land on that uh, platform or just <laughs> when we let when fights. we let them when we let them was right. it? <laughs> and yeah, I mean, um, it's you know, it's next time they do it, I'm sure next time they have a con, uh, I suggest you know trying that free weekend or that free week. They do those about once a month now, so that's not a oh really? Yeah, they do them pretty oh, okay. frequently. In the past few months, there's been at least one a month, okay. so. I expect there'll be one sure, before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I look forward to hopping on if that's the case, because uh, I think every session of that will just get me closer and closer to joining this fucking cult. And I guess it would be the, the anniversary sale from when they started uh, Star Citizen, which is in, mm-hmm. I think, mid-late November. That's when they're mm-hmm. going to have a lot of limited ships on sale and stuff like that. So. Oh, nice. But yeah, I will keep you apprised of that, because that's when they'll have a lot of exclusive ships that you can't get otherwise up for sale. Mm-hmm. But uh, just uh, throwing on to one of your points, I've played a lot of more modern space sim games. I like I played a lot of Elite Dangerous. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, 
Battlefront and the Battlefront Indie clone. I played those. I played a lot of games where I'm handling spaceships and Star Citizen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just feels the most precise. It feels the most comfortable once you get into it. Elite Dangerous mm -hmm. is decent. It's good, but it's just very swoopy. You can't do sh you know the sharp turns like you can in some of the dogfighters in Star Citizen, and it just feel it just controls better in Star Citizen. So mm -hmm. I absolutely agree with you on that one point. And only that one point, Jose. <laughs> uh, Will you I, be avoiding the uh, Citadel? Like it has some sort of space plague? Mm, Is that what you're saying? Maybe. Our Corp's not really my thing. I don't really care about it, but it's cool to see it developed and move further along. Really, all I want to do is get my retaliator and fly around with my friends <laughs> and get space booty. That's, that's all. I just want to live a bastardized, bastardized version of Cowboy Bebop and Firefly. All I really care about. Jose is going to be my fay. It's going to be delicious. So delicious. Uh, any other thoughts before we start to bring this to a close? Um, oh, uh, did you want to talk about that uh, that trailer for the single player? Or like the... Yeah, I was going to save that for next one, but yeah, we might as well get oh, into that. Okay. Um, basically this... Well, actually, I, should probably, I don't even think I mentioned... Like I said before, there's going to be two games. There's going to be Star Citizen... And there's going to be Squadron 42. Squadron 42 being a single-player game that like leads into Star Citizen, if you will. Squadron, like, like I just said, Squadron 42 single-player. Uh, Star Citizen is a big MMO world where you interact with other players and you go about your space life and do space things, and it's wonderful. The way they stated they're going to do stuff going forward, or like when the game launches, is they're not going to release a bunch of expansions and kind of... The block off the community from each other. What they're going to do is they're going to keep expanding on and developing Star Citizen, and then they're going to keep doing different single-player campaigns that'll like lead into or bleed into uh, Star Citizen itself, which I think is a fantastic way to do it. That way you don't have to worry about you know separating the community from one another. You still get the money to keep developing stuff, and it's all single-player, which I still like single-player in 2015. I know, fucking crazy thought, but you know, it tickles me sometimes. What can I say? Oh, damn it. There's someone in chat, and I'm not logged in. Good. But yeah, that's... I don't even remember what initially brought that up. Oh, I just remember you mentioned that there was two separate games, and then that right. trailer that... You oh, the, right, right, right. And they, they, for CitizenCon, they put out a Squadron 42 trailer, which had, uh... I can... I can't remember his name. Good lord. I should be ashamed. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman giving a speech, which kind of felt weird, honestly. Just, I don't know if... It's just the voice didn't match the character. Like, go back and watch that. It's it's kind of weird to watch. But uh, they revealed a big cast that they're putting together, or they put together for Squadron 42, and it stretches from, like, Lord of the Rings to Game of Thrones to... Uh... Oh, man. Just losing momentum so desperately here. Other stuff. Stuff, pop culture stuff. Stuff people would recognize. Uh, X-Files. It's got Scully in it. Smeagol. It's just, it's got a interesting cast. It's like kind of, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, of course. From it's just like, it's weird. Magic. It's like they plucked all these, like, actors out of certain things. We're like, oh, we'll take one person from X-Files, we'll do some from Star Wars. Oh, we gotta get some Game of Thrones in there. Pounds of Faust. Pounds of Faust. Yeah, it's, it was just, I don't know, interesting casting, but yeah, looks really cool. And it got a, like, got a lot of people into the game. I think once 2.0 comes out and all this stuff starts to come together, that's when you'll see, like, a massive swell of Star Citizen stuff. And just people getting into the game, which you can, you know, walk around in your friend's ship and pew pew other people in other ships. Friendship. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, Jose. What would I do without you? You want to be better friends, too. Not really. But yeah, it's going to have Squadron 42 big. They're, no, they're sparing no expense for the single player campaign. It doesn't seem like they're going to be like these tacked on things to kind of help explain Star Citizen. It seems like they're going to be like their own entity that will help build upon what Star Citizen would be, which is a good thing. It, it it's taking a long fucking time, but Star Citizen really is coming together quite nicely, and it seems like it's going to be quite the game, even if it's still a couple years out. Word. I agree. Shallow and pedantic. And just to kind of give you where one point where Star Citizen that Star Citizen is at right now, it recently hit over a million players, which was pretty much due directly to Citizen. Well, it was absolutely due directly to Citizen Con, but I think uh, that trailer actually played a big part of it. People just saw Gary Oldman talking and wanted to throw money at Star Citizen. It's my own personal theory. 
And uh, just something interesting I just recently stumbled across on the Star Citizen subreddit a little while ago. Apparently, in 2014, Star Citizen raised more money than all other Kickstarter projects combined for that year. Even Cloud Pageant uh, Manager Simulator? Yes. I know. Didn't get the funding. Whatever but, uh, the that was That was... Kickstarter's got some weird shit on it. But yeah, just kind of give you a scope for that. It's... It's a big game. It's got a lot of money behind it. Yeah. A lot of people are flooding in. Do they release? It's yeah, around a hundred. It's around a hundred million. I don't know the exact number. I think last I checked, it was like ninety three, ninety four. I'm pretty oh, certain shit. it'll hit a hundred million before the year's out. That's a lot of goddamn money. But really? they actually, they, I mean, they're improving on the game. They got all these voice actors for their single player component. They they're really putting a lot of fucking money into the game, so it's not, you know, all these claims of, ah, oh, vaporware, nothing's actually happening, or, what the fuck, why? No, it's, it's, it's happening, it just, game development takes a long time, and just Star Citizen has been very open about it, and very out there right from the get-go, so just people have been paying attention to it, as opposed to, like, a, you know, a Fallout 4 is coming out soon, I'm hyped for that, everyone's fucking hyped for that, but, you know, the first few years of the game's development, no one even fucking heard a thing about it. Aside from maybe, uh, yeah, we're working on it. Whereas Star Citizen, like, you know, patch notes every week. They've got all these different web shows covering different aspects of the game. You know, Bug Smashers, there's fucking Around the Verse, there's just all sorts of shit. So it's just, mm. it gets a lot of attention because, it, you know, draws it to itself, basically. But the, the devs have always been very good about, you know, what the fuck's wrong with the game at this point in time, what the fuck you can expect, you know, what's coming, how they're building it. So it's just very hands-on. And I think that's why, that's why I'm fucking getting impatient with it, just because I've, I've only really been invested in Star Citizen for, like, eight months or so, and it just, it's never far from my mind, Jose. I just want to fly around mm -hmm. and run retaliator. Maybe you should stop visiting the subreddit. I should. Every day. Well, not every day, almost yeah. every day. Well, it's right Ah, man, you gotta, you gotta keep up to date. Especially now, with 1.3 being released, I'm kind of curious to see where it goes from here to 1.0. So, yeah. It's just interesting to look at from, like, someone who really enjoys video games, just the way it's coming together. It's so community-driven. Mm -hmm. It's just... Yeah, I mean, it's not some big, what, developer or uh, publisher? No. I think it's, it's all regular assholes throwing money. Throwing their regular asshole money at an amazing yeah. game. Uh, but, yeah, we, we kind of... This, this was absolutely a scattershot of a uh, cast for this. I missed a lot of stuff. I will touch on that next time we do this. I just kind of... I wanted to start doing this because, like I said, 1.3 just came out. A lot of stuff is hopefully going to be happening in between now and 2.0, which hopefully will be in the next couple months. So, yeah. This is kind of where it's at now. And, uh, you know, maybe next time around we'll talk specific ships or, like, builds or tactics. There's, there's literally nothing we could run out of to talk about in Star Citizen if we did if when we do this you and know once or twice if a month. anything it'll it'll just be another way of you giving me information about the game yeah this is really for Jose until I, until I really get you know this is all a the... clever ruse for Jose to dump like $700 into Star Citizen at which point we will terminate this cast my god that's, that's all this is boys it was a long con but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna post this in the subreddit I'm gonna try to see if we can get our Oh. idiot faces exposed to, this, to our citizen community and just kind of what they think oh, of our okay. buffoonery and maybe get some input from them on like where we where they'd like to see us go in the future and stuff like that so like i said kind of kind of cultish but good good people well, i totally offended them i called them cultists but they're they're pl they're pleasant cultists so they've got that going for them usually the type that each <laughs> anywho um, but yeah, we're we done now. Uh, this has been our first Star we Citizen cast. Now. We president now. We're going to be doing more of these in the future. I'm not sure how often. At least once a month, I think. Especially in the next couple months, like I said. Lots of stuff should be happening. Um, but yeah. We hope you've enjoyed. can expect more of this in the future. And, uh, we'll try to be less... This was our first roundabout, so like I said, very scattershot. We'll try to be more, uh, concise next time around. Easier to follow and all that good stuff. But yeah, this has been the Dark Mushroom Media Cast. Uh, 
We hope you've enjoyed, and we will see you next time.